Welcome back guys. So I'm just sharing a bit of showing some footage for you. I was actually in Marks and Spencer's, one of the larger stores in Marks and Spencer's a couple of weeks ago. And I was actually went in for a sandwich on a completely different floor. I somehow ended up in the perfume, you know, area, like as you do. Just thought I'd have a look at what they have. Um, I've never looked at the perfumes in Marks and Spencer's before. I had no idea what to expect. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd share and film and show you guys what to expect in Marks and Spencer's and what they have. This is lovely. And if you'll notice on this shelf right now, there's no boxes of this bottle. It was the only, it was as a tester with no nothing in store. And um, I really enjoyed this perfume. This reminded me a bit of Oud Bouquet. Um, but they didn't have anything in stock, so that was disappointing. There's a lot of, so there's, they have got a lot of selection of perfumes and I didn't get to, to sample them all. But they're all pleasant, all likeable, nothing too strong. Um, I was literally in there on my lunch break, so I didn't get a chance to sniff everything, and I think I probably would have got a headache if I had. This is nice. That's like a, a body oil with um, bits and bobs. The blush sounded nice, but they didn't have a tester, so I couldn't sample that. I was just intrigued to see what they had and if I recognised any fragrance signs. Obviously, this is one I this is one I if I've mentioned this before, but I do know of um, Shea in Blue. I think that's what it's called. This is actually a lovely fragrance line. Um, a British fragrance line. I have tried a few in this line. I've tried the Black Tulip, which didn't really work for me, unfortunately, but it was still a pleasant fragrance. I think, what am I sniffing there? I'm not sure. Belladonna. That was quite pleasant as well. All fairly light. Uh, next up, I think I'm about to try one called Sorted Caramel. No, I could be wrong. Sorted Caramel, I will mention, because... It was delicious. It was really lovely. It was just basically salted. Here we are. Here we go. Salted caramel. It is exactly like that. Very sharp, straight up salted caramel. It is what it says on the tin, quite literally. Um, but there are some really pleasant ones, actually, in Shea and Blue. This black... Oh, blood orange. That one does... That is nice. A blood, the blood orange does smell exactly like blood orange. Quite watery fragrances, though. They don't tend to last too well. Um... These were lovely. These, again, it says what it says on the tin, does it on the tin. Um, they are what they say. And they were very pleasant and very straightforward. These bright orange ones um, were very strong of the note that they tell you they are. Reminded me a little bit of the Aqua de Palma line. Um, again, that one is bergamot. That one was the peach. Very inoffensive, very, you know, likeable, very likeable scents. I believe those are the Marks and Spencer's private brand. They are very pleasant. These are really pretty bottles. I didn't get a chance to uh, sample them all, but they, I like that they listed all the notes at the front to give you a good idea of what they contain. This was Fragonard. Really, really pretty bottles. Very pleasant. And, um... Nice so yeah, this is just a short overview of all the offerings of perfumes they have in Marks and Spencers. In case anyone was is interested and you know happens to wonder what they do actually have, it's nice to have something a little bit different, not and see something a little bit different for a change. And next time I'll have more time, I can sample them properly. Hi guys, welcome back. And if you're new, thanks for stopping by. I've got some lovely new fragrances in front of me that I've been really excited to share with you. Got a little collection gathering here that I've acquired since my last um, perfume review. And uh, we're going to just jump straight in, I think. So, I managed to get a bottle of Opulence Oud. This is from eBay. Good old eBay often comes through for me. You know, searching everything, I managed to find somebody that was in fact selling this fragrance. Brand new, sealed, a little bit price, pricier than, you know, the retail. Um, they were probably being a bit cheeky with the price, but I just, I knew I liked it. I knew I wanted it, and I knew it was a rare one. Clearly, it wasn't available elsewhere, so I snapped it up. It still wasn't expensive, and I just get into this. So, as you may recognise the bottle from the shelves in Marks & Spencer's that uh, you saw in the video, this is exactly how it looks. It's actually kind of a pinky colour. I don't know if it's supposed to be that colour. I've got nothing I can compare it to particularly other than the one that was in Marks and Spencer's, but it is what it is. It smells exactly the same as the one that I found on the shelves. It's um, a sort of vintage looking bottle, in my opinion. It just seems to me like something you would have from years ago. It's a sort of plasticky gold lid. It doesn't look plasticky, but it is plasticky. Just a nice, solid, heavy bottle and uh, the packaging is really lovely it's just embossed with this kind of eastern design gold and it is kind of opulent i think they've got that 
right you know it looks opulent it definitely smells opulent too so the moment I first sprayed this I was reminded of Oud Bouquet it's really pretty sweet and actually quite luxurious Oud Bouquet so judging from the colour of this this, um, this juice and also from the opening of this particular bottle, I'm sensing this bottle may be very slightly older than the one I, I found in Marks and Spencers. The opening from this one compared to the one I sprayed in Marks and Spencers, this one comes out a little, a little bitter on the opening. It's like a bitter, uh, sort of sharper oud than what I remember it. But the dry down is, I'm happy to say, ha as I remember it and what I was expecting. It's just a really sweet, pretty sparkling oud and it does remind me of the oud in oud bouquet but without that kind of lovely sort of gourmand rose that you get in that fragrance it's not too strong and it's not too overpowering and it's not too deep and it's not too medicinal it's just a really pleasant sweet pretty oud and i think it's easier wearing than oud bouquet in the sense that it hasn't got that you know that really strong projection i don't think it probably lasts as long as oud bouquet the reviews i found of it on marks and spencers are people that just talk so highly of it but then say it's hard to get hold of and that they wish they were still selling it so i really don't know anything more than that and, and to why we can't find it and why it's so rare um, but i'm i'm really happy that i've got hold of this bottle and i'm looking forward to wearing it a lot in the autumn and winter so my next fragrance is one that i have been enjoying so much lately and it's weird because like other fragrances I may have mentioned in other videos, I didn't really care for it when I first smelt it at the beginning of the year, but my nose wasn't really developed and I kind of just maybe had high expectations or maybe there was just too much going on. I didn't really like this. Yeah, my nose is clearly unpredictable and I have no idea what's going on. But I got a bottle of Roses and Chocolate by Mancera. Um, I had a little sample and I said, yeah, I tried to try it again. I just kept spraying it and thought you know what this is really nice it's really unusual it doesn't smell like anything else that I have it's a hard one to describe when you think of roses and chocolate you just think of luxury and rich chocolate and rich roses and, and this romantic kind of vibe I don't think this is what this is for me personally um I haven't bothered to get the box because it's just a box but I have kept it in the, the pouch which I do think is a really good idea because obviously you don't want to have an ugly box on your shelf you can have the pouch which obviously keeps the the juice dark and safe from light and this is the is this 100 ml 120 ml hang on there you go 100 please focus 120 ml I wear this in the evening um occasionally during the day but not a lot it's kind of it's it's an unusual fragrance I think it's one I like to enjoy more in the, in the evening because it's kind of fun and it's just sweet and it's kind of playful um you do smell the roses and you do smell the chocolate to me this is like a, a it's just, it, I'm not gonna lie it's, it's kind of a synthetic fragrance it does smell synthetic but in the nicest possible way in that it doesn't kind of overwhelm you and doesn't make you feel like you're headachey or anything like that. The chocolate is like a milk chocolate. It's very light. It's very powdery. The rose is a very delicate, simple, pretty, soapy rose. So I don't know if you could imagine those two things together, but that is obviously what you're getting. It's a powdery chocolate and a kind of a very delicate, soapy rose. So we having said that, it's quite easy wearing it's kind of playful it doesn't smell like anything else in like i say in my in my collection i'm really enjoying it and straight off the bat if i smell, smell it from the cap i think it's the soapy soapy quality that i get first very sweet soapy roses and chocolate so if you had a bar of soap that happens to be fragranced as roses and chocolate that's how it smells this one projects really nicely i can smell it on myself others can smell it on me and it lasts all day it lasts you know i think a lot of mancera fragrances do have a really good um projection and siage and, and and longevity and i think this is no exception this one actually does has, has really good performance one of the base notes in this is actually cedar and it's, i think it's quite a bit of a trend that's happening with these fragrances that i've noticed a lot of the ones i love have got cedar in the base so whether that's just a coincidence or whether i genuinely have a a nose that enjoys seed and I'm detecting it in some small level I don't know but um, I just really enjoy this fragrance and this is obviously a screw, screw cap so yeah roses and chocolate really gorgeous fragrance unisex worn by anyone check it out absolutely love it 
I didn't expect to buy this one. Again, I went through this whole new fragrance craze at the beginning of the year, smelling absolutely everything and decided, you know, I do like this, I don't like this. And I kind of just put, wrote this one off as something I wasn't expecting to get because I have um, Lisa Lempica uh, De L El De Lolita, which smells very similar to this fragrance. But now that we're hitting a colder month, I realised that this actually is far more... Um, this one has far more impact for the colder months. It has far more projection, it has, gives you more punch, but it does carry very similar um, scent DNA to the El Di Lolita. You fall in love with this bottle design. It's like a little mini golden loaf of bread. I think it's cuter in life than it is on camera. Um, it looks so gorgeous with everything else. It just sits there like this. There's a ton of really delicious notes in here, and I'll obviously list them again. The the notes that I pick up certainly are the blood orange, the cinnamon, the vanilla and the caramel. It's just off the bat, it's a, a warm, freshly baked orange and chocolate cake. It, it, that is quite literally what it smells like. This is a 30ml bottle. Um, I didn't need a bigger bottle and I certainly couldn't have afforded one. And I, again, I got this not on eBay. I found a website, a bit like eBay. It was called Bonanza, I think it is. It kind of runs on the same principle as eBay and that you can just, people are selling their things and you know, you're buying things. Um, and somebody was selling this in, I think it was Russia for cheaper than what it should be. Only a little bit cheaper, not too much. Um, and I just thought, yeah, I'm gonna have that. I would be wearing this in the evening simply because I just love smelling it in the evenings. It's so cozy. It's so, it's just gorgeous. It's just this lovely, you know, edible hug of a fragrance, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It smells like quality and there's nothing in here that smells synthetic. It's just, it's just gorgeous. And I really didn't appreciate this when I first tried it at the beginning of the year. It's a lovely gourmand addition to have for autumn, winter, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm looking forward to wearing it a lot more. This is, Maison Margiela, oh focus will you please, Whispers in the Library, first of all the fragrance name just got me, I love a good name, you know, it just comes close, second I think with um, Confessions of a Garden Gnome, that's got to be the best name for a fragrance ever, but Whispers in the Library, oh, I was intrigued, I had to know what this thing smelled like, this is really special to me, this is a fragrance that I would probably warrant a full review, um, but I wanted to share with it you anyway because obviously we're doing a haul and it's a new fragrance. So Whispers in the Library is one that invokes memories. It's association for me as well in two different ways and it is really, really special to me. This reminds me of my granddad who was a book binder. Um, I'm not going to say this smells like books. It doesn't smell like old books, anything like that, but it does smell of woods and kind of ancient bookcases that kind of vibe and obviously it does contain um wood note really beautiful peppery woodsy note in here just makes me imagine this beautiful old library it's not just about the old smell of old books it's just all the wood and the whole antique side of everything um, and my granddad being this, having this absolute passion for books and being a book binder, you know, it just takes you right back to that kind of gorgeous smell and that association. Uh, in antiquing in the best possible way. Just mentioning cedar again. This cedar note comes in. It's a woods that's just really gorgeous. A lovely woodsy note. And it just really does capture that memory of my granddad. Second association, actually, to me, is is. A wintry scene, like a a wood cabin in a snowy woods in winter. Obviously winter because it's, it's a snowy cabin. But I love the winter. I love the snow. I love being a, a surrounded by snow. This is going to be my winter fragrance. It's something just so uplifting and magical in this fragrance for me. It just it just does something for me. It just invokes just something magical and childlike and there's a gorgeous vanilla running through this as well to stop it from being too straight up woodsy and too maybe too masculine the vanilla here keeps it an element of sweetness in here and maybe a slightly creaminess it's very very easy to wear it's most certainly a male and female fragrance um absolutely gorgeous admiring this beautiful lineup here of golden autumnal fragrances but we're gonna 
switch things up and go into the blue a little bit here. Next up, we have Angel by Mugler. This is the Eau de Toilette. This is my first ever Angel. I was looking off Fragrantica, as you do, you know, it's it's the place to go now and it's a great library of fragrances on there and it is such a great website, but according to Fragrantica, there's 38 flankers of Angel. That's pretty impressive. This is the latest one. This is the latest Angel flanker and it has actually replaced the Eau de Toilette that came out in 2011 that was shaped like a kind of a shooting star. This one is um, staying true to the original Eau de Toilette bottle. And it obviously is the gorgeous, gorgeous star. This is such a beautiful bottle. I mean, really, I just love, I've always loved these bottles. I've never bought the actual fragrance because it was always too strong for me. I really can't stand strong patchouli in fragrances. I just don't, I can't, I can't do patchouli. But this really hasn't got the strength of the patchouli in as, as it has in the Eau de Parfum. Um, and also what I love is the fact this does actually stand up. The originals always used to lay over like this and it's just not helpful when you've got a lot of fragrances. It just kind of is a bit bulky and it's pretty standing up and I'm so pleased that they've done that with the design because it's just so much easier and it's just so beautiful. So, so the Eau de Toilette is a much lighter version of the Eau de Parfum. It, it really is just a much lighter version. Um, and I'm so happy that it is. I, as I say, I could never get along with the Eau de Parfum. It was too strong for me, it used to give me a headache. But I loved I loved the everything else about the fragrance without the patchouli. And this to me is exactly what I always hoped it would be. I'm trying to find the notes in front of me here. The peony, the mandarin orange. I can't, I honestly don't detect anything individually. This has got cedar in the base. So, you know, just saying there's something going on there. White woods does have patchouli, but again, it's not strong at all. This is a just a like a fluffy, warm blue hug. A fluffy, warm blue hug, which is, happens to be gourmand as well. It's sweet. It's creamy. It's... Um, it's the angel DNA, but toned right, right down. And there's nothing offensive or headachey about this fragrance whatsoever. I am wind it down now and leave you with, with probably the most simplistic and the most affordable fragrance out of this entire collection here. This is White Tea by Elizabeth Arden. I've seen this mentioned on YouTube by a few different re uh, re uh, reviewers and I was really intrigued. I got a sample of this and it came through with well I bought the bottle because of the, it was a deal on the more you buy the you know the, the better deal but I bought this on the basis that I could get the sample with it and I wanted to try the sample and make sure that I enjoyed it and I you know I wanted to keep the bottle which I am which I have I haven't opened it yet I thought I'd save that for you guys um this fragrance is so pretty easy feminine and just so clean it reminds me so much of Flora, Botan Flora Botanica by Balenciaga. It's very, very similar to that. It has a very similar sort of clean, green, sparkling kind of a vibe. Um, it came out in 2017, and there are quite a few, there are a few flankers of this already. There's, a, I think, an orchid, vanilla, and I think there's another one in the white tea collection. She also does the green tea, which I think is extremely popular as well. Um, let's just open this up. This is such an easy daytime fragrance. You could spray this on um, with, with any other fragrance if you wanted to layer it. It's just beautiful. Okay, so let's just get rid of the box here. So this is White Tea by Elizabeth Arden. The bottle is just so pretty. It's so simple and elegant and ethereal. And the fragrance really does smell it, the design sums up the fragrance. Simple, white, clean, stunning, beautiful. And for the money, for the for the affordability of this, it is so worth having in your collection. Lovely fragrances. Uh, notes, sorry. The notes that stand out to me, particularly that I can detect at least, are the exotic woods. It's very woodsy. The white iris, I definitely get this beautiful powdery, delicate powdery iris. And the fern in this just makes this 
wintry somehow just this clean woody wintry fragrance um if anyone's got floral botanica the way i can describe this to you is if floral botanica you can imagine that was like a, a concentrated fabric softener that was the scent of your concentrated fabric softener this is the clean laundry that you've used it for i can't say i'm familiar with tea fragrances so i wouldn't recognize that in this I just love how clean it is, how gentle it is, how easy wearing it is, and pretty and feminine. My only my only thing I could if I could change one thing about this fragrance, the clary sage in here, I would just amp that up slightly because I love clary sage and it would just give it a bit more character. That's the only thing I would change. Like I say, it's so inoffensive and easy. Anyone could wear this and I really can't see anyone disliking it. Great fragrance to gift to somebody, you know, because it's so um, easy wearing and pretty and simplistic. And it's a lovely quality bottle. It's actually a really heavy, lovely bottle. It doesn't, although it's um, inexpensive, it doesn't, there's nothing cheap about it. The actual fragrance itself smells quite luxurious and the bottle is quite luxurious. And it'd just be the perfect blind buy, perfect pre perfect present for somebody. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I'll leave you there and I'll decide which of these I want to wear this evening and which one is calling my name. So take care, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.